Hello, this is Greg Wilson, Technical Evangelist with Adobe. Today I'm joined with Shashwati Keith, uh, QA or QE tester from the Flex SDK team. And uh, Shashwati has done something uh, really cool. She has built an app, uh, a mobile app, that is in not only the Android marketplace, but the uh, Apple App Store. So the same app, same project, uh, deployed to all of these devices. And um, so I wanted to talk to her today, and, f and let's learn about the app, see a quick demo, and then understand uh, the benefits of using Flex to build an app like that. So first of all, tell us uh, a little bit what, what you do. I know you're on the QA team for mm -hmm. the SDK, so you, you catch all the, the bugs before we have to be exposed to them, hopefully, right? Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, tell us a little more about what you do. Yes, I'm a QA engineer on the Flex SDK team, uh, and part of my job is to um, test the various Flex SDK components. And the last one year, I've been focused on uh, mobile. Um, so testing different mobile components, as well as writing scenario applications uh, to flesh out some of our bugs. OK. Now, was this app a scenario application that just got out of hand and turned into a real app? Is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. OK. Um, so now, tell us a little bit about the app. Uh, it's called Muni Tracker, and it's um, it's for the Muni system here in San Francisco, right? Which yes. is what the transit buses and right. trains and things like yes. that. Uh, so tell us about the app, and also what gave you the idea. I mean, how did you end up with a scenario test that uh, led to this? Yeah. So uh, a few months ago, uh, we had a, a little contest within our team to build various scenario apps to see you know, who can find the most bugs and all that fun stuff. So uh, I decided to create this Muni app. Uh, and the reason was uh, I am a San Francisco resident, and I use the Muni buses very frequently. Uh, but uh, I wanted an app that I could uh, quickly refer to and look at the various routes on the map and uh, get prediction times for. Okay. So uh, that's how I created Muni Tracker. Uh, and then uh, it just turned out pretty good, and I put it on the Android store. Okay, And you've had a decent number of downloads, I believe, right? Yes. I know in the Android, a uh, few thousand, I believe, right? right? Uh, and the uh, Apple App Store, which was a few weeks later that you mm -hmm. got into that, uh, and you've, you've had a decent number of downloads yes. there. And I believe in both, I was just looking this morning, like four and a half stars right. on both. So people are using it and liking it. I mean, it's a real app that uh, uh, users of the Muni system are enjoying, so that's great. Now, it was built with uh, a preview release of uh, Flash Builder 451, mm -hmm. right? And just for those that don't know, uh, 451 is uh, the release that just came out that supports not only Android, which we've had for uh, a little while since 4.5, but also supports uh, iOS, so you can build apps for iPhone, uh, iPad, iPod Touch, um, uh, iPhone 3GS, I believe, right. and, uh, uh, and also a BlackBerry Playbook. So, uh, so using that is how she built it. Now, the way I found out about it is sort of interesting. She built it for Android, deployed it, it had some early success. Um, and uh, I heard about it, and a lot of the internal management was was asking, well, hey, let's let's get it on the uh, Apple App Store now that we have that capability, because a lot of us were excited when right. when that was made possible. Um, so uh, I believe at the time you you didn't have an Apple developer account, and plus you had your day job getting right. in the way. So. <laughs> uh, I had just gone through the exercise with another app, so I volunteered to take a stab at it. So. Uh, she sent me the Flex project. I actually shot a video of myself converting it. It literally took less than 10 minutes to take this this project and deploy it to uh, uh, an, my uh, iPad and my uh, iPod Touch, which I thought was pretty darn cool. So um, so I sent Shashwati back an email and said, here's all I had to do. Um, and uh, and I think a few days later, you submitted it to the App Store, and now it's in both, right? So. So anyway, enough said. Let's uh, take a look at the app. Now, I, I have it. Uh, a bunch of my devices uh, that I travel with uh, in front of us. We have uh, an iPod Touch. We have an HTC Inspire Android phone. We have an iPad 2 and a Galaxy Tab uh, Android tablet. But, you know, it runs fantastic on all. So anyway, why don't you give us a demo on the uh, iPad? And I've got the app uh, up and running there. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the app is uh, up and running already. And uh, we are in a view where we've selected uh, a bus line uh, and, a, and a bus stop. So uh, in this view, uh, you have a map that you can you know, pan and uh, zoom. And we get this data from the Muni website, and they publish this. Uh, and we're polling every 10 seconds to get the live locations of the buses. Uh, so the arrows, the black arrows, indicate the current location of a bus, and uh, they're oriented in the right direction. We get that info as well. Uh, and the red dot is the stop that we selected. So as you can see, there are a couple of buses coming up, and we saw one that just moved. 
Uh, and we, t we, we can see the prediction times on the top here as well. So there's one that's uh, six minutes away, and there's one that's uh, nine minutes away. Now it's eight minutes away. So what I'll do is uh, I'll switch back to the previous views. So when you select the Routes tab, um, the first view you get is the Muni Routes. Uh, so this is all the routes available in the system. Uh, and you can select whichever one you want. So uh, let's say I select uh, the end Judah. It will load up all the stops for it. Uh, by default, it loads up inbound um, at first, but you can switch it to outbound, and it will get the outbound stops for you. So I, let's say I select the power station stop. Uh, it takes you to this map view. And in this map view, you get the, the entire route for this bus uh, and the stop and the arrows that, we, um, that indicate the bus location that I demoed earlier. Uh, and lastly, uh, I have a tab here for the updates. Uh, and this uh, points. This is actually a stage web view uh, component, and uh, it points to the Muni website. And Muni frequently, uh, SFMTA frequently posts um, updates here, uh, basically delays and other things like that. Now, go back to the uh, the list for a minute. I was I want to point out a couple of things um, for developers that have it built apps for mobile devices. You know, they may be noticing things like when you scroll to the top of the list, there's a little bit of a bounce to it, and uh, which you know, any user of a mobile device these days is used to that. It's a very subtle indication that you've reached the end of the list. Um, now, as a developer, do you have to do anything special for that? or No, it's uh, out-of-the-box functionality. When you drop in a list, it's got this uh, bounce pool effects built into it. And as far as being able to handle the, uh, the, the touching and the, um, you know, touch scrolling and all that, it's all automatic, yes. right? So. And that's really the beauty of this is that it, you know, you're not having to focus on those details that make a mobile app feel like a mobile app. It, right. it looks and feels like an, a native app, quite frankly, and uh, you know, with all the functionality. And this exact same app is running on Android devices, uh, you know, both smaller and larger. Mm -hmm. um, now, a few questions I have when you were developing this, um, you know, for having to support this many different screen sizes, and it's not just the size itself. You know, there's resolution, there's aspect ratio, DPI. Uh, I mean, how do you address that as a developer? You know, what are the common types of things that other developers should be looking out for as they do this? So a couple of things uh, come to mind. And the first thing is um, the font size and then, like, let's say, the button size and skins on different uh, devices. So um, iPad is 160 DPI device. Yeah. But uh, let's say this HTC phone here is a 240 DPI device, or close to 240. Uh, so things are going to scale differently. Like a font size that looks right on the iPad may not look right on the phone. Out of the box, uh, the Flex SDK does a lot of the scaling for you. Uh, but if you want a specific ex explicit uh, button height, for instance, this button bar on top here, mm -hmm. um, then you can use media queries to specify the font sizes and the different skins for different uh, DPIs. You can also do it per OS as well. So if you want a completely different look on your iPad versus your um, Android phone, you can do that. Okay. Now, uh, and when you bring that up, it reminds me when you when you sent me your original project and I got it working on iOS. Uh, one of the things I quickly learned was, you know, when I navigated into a map, I had no way to go back because there wasn't a back button. Right. Because you you were totally relying on the Android back button, right? Right. Um, and so I, I I remember I sent you an email saying, hey, it's, it needs a back button for iOS, and literally within like ten minutes, you sent me back <laughs> a project. So, but that's the subtle things you have to think of as developers, right? right? I mean, every every device is different. Um, but, you know, compared to building a native app for iOS and then turning around building a native app for uh, Android, you know, it's, you know, wow, pretty yes. substantial savings. So, yep. all right. Um, well, that's been great. We uh, definitely appreciate the demo. Uh, this is one of the first apps I know that's a real app that's in uh, not only the Android marketplace, but the iOS app store. And I believe you're looking at doing the uh, BlackBerry Playbook that's store right. Uh, soon, right? So we look forward to that. That's yep. going. So then you have the trifecta, all three. Yeah. All right, well, great. Um, so if you're interested in building apps um, across these types of devices, I encourage you to take a look at the uh, just released Flash Builder 4.51. It supports Android, iOS, and BlackBerry Playbook. Um, you can find a trial on the website, and we thank you.